We're back out here at the Big Lake once again. And today it's all about the truth when it comes to the very best lures and presentations for your pre-spawn bass fishing. Is it a lipless crank? Is it a jig? Is it something else? Stick around, we're gonna talk all about it. There, I got him. Ooh, that one's nice. Ooh, that's, oh yeah, he's good. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing. And as the rain starts coming down, I'm coming off of the lake after being out here for a few hours of another day of successful pre-spawn bass fishing. And this type of day, the weather that we have right here indicates exactly what I was talking about before. When it comes to the month of February, anything goes. Yesterday, bluebird skies. Day before that, a little bit of cloud, a little bit of chill, a little bit of wind. Today, it's raining and we're supposed to have thunderstorms that are going to go through. You never know what you're going to get. And that really does play a big part when it comes to your bait selection. The weather, the conditions always have a huge effect on whatever it is you need to be throwing and how those bass behave when you're out on the water. You've got to be cognizant of that. You've got to have that at the forefront of your mind. Like we say, prepare before you go. The night before, whatever, looking at the weather report, looking at how that current is going to set up, looking at how that wind is going to set up. As I get soaked out here in the rain, I knew it was going to be like that. I had the raincoat with me, so I was prepared. I knew it was going to be rainy today, and I changed my lures and presentations. I mixed things up based on those conditions. And the beautiful thing about the pre-spawn, the great thing about fishing in the pre-spawn is it can be very forgiving at times because those bass are coming out of their long hibernation in the winter. I know they're not really hibernating, but you know what I mean. They spend most of the winter with their bellies in the mud, not doing much of anything. Now they're waking up. Now they're getting ready to feed. Now is when, you know, the good fishing can really kick in. And as such, we have some wiggle room. But if you want to catch the best of the best, if you really want to dial in those really nice bass, those big girls that are really fattening up, then you've got to fine tune just exactly what it is that you're going to throw. Now, when I said at the very beginning, is it a lipless crank? Is it a jig or is it something else? Well, what we really mean by that is, is well, is it something like a moving bait or is it something like a bottom bouncing technique? Now, don't get me wrong. Not all moving baits are lipless cranks and not all bottom bouncing techniques are jigs. They are very different. But that's actually the kind of school we really want to go with. That's the train of thought that we're trying to narrow things down with, first and foremost. Do we want to go with a moving bait? Do we want to go with maybe a slower presentation, a bottom bouncing technique, something like that? On a t day like today, well, I was able to mix it up. I had the leeway to have both a moving bait and a bottom bouncing technique. Because the water has warmed up enough, that I can actually start working some faster baits. Now, what am I looking for? Well, as the wind picks up, as that wind starts to blow just a little bit, like we talked about before, and if I'm in a different area of water, like we talked about before, the three zones, right? Zone one out deep, zone two, the intermediary, or the intermediate rather, that's closer to the bank, about a cast and a half away from the bank, and then the zone three, which is where the bank anglers live. That's right up along the bank. Well, I can fish a lipless crank, and this is a six cents Quake 70, and I can fish something like this in all three zones. And because I'm going to have changing conditions as that day goes on, I want something like this already tied on so I can fish up near the bank, near 
structure near rock, near timber, near laydowns, or I can fish in a little bit deeper water. And I'm doing it just a little bit differently. Instead of casting it out and reeling it in, I'm actually letting it sink. I'm letting it flutter down. And sometimes I'll let it go all the way to the bottom and just start yo-yoing it. Or as you've seen me do before, as you've seen me work a lipless crank before, I will twitch it almost like I'm working a jerk bait. I have gotten incredible strikes doing that. Twitching the rod like I'm working a jerk bait, you know, it does something to excite the fish. It's almost like a school of bait fish that are suddenly changing direction, suddenly darting in a different way, you know. So that gives me one way to work something. Now, if the water is more calm, if the conditions have died down, if the wind has become slack, all right? Now, I can still have a little bit of rain. I can still have a little bit of precipitation going on, although not a whole lot. And that's when I'm going to be pulling out something like this jig. And this jig right here, this is one of the ones that I make. And this is, you know, you can see it's purple and it's blue. And it's perfect for a day like today. Overcast conditions, really cloudy skies. That water's murky. It's got some stain because we've had some rain, which, you know, is going to have some runoff, which is going to, you know, push that sand and silt right into the water, as well as all the wind churning up the waves which again is going to create some murkiness when those conditions calm down when that wind calms down just a little bit i'm able to fish something like this half ounce jig and again this is another presentation that allows me versatility i'm able to fish it near the bank i'm able to fish it out deep and how i'm fishing it depends on where i'm at near the bank well i'm tending to make quick casts with it giving it a quick yo-yo and then bringing it back to the boat because I'm actually moving down the bank pretty good. I'm making targeted casts at structure. I'm looking for laydowns. I'm looking for flooded brush. I'm looking for, you know, a big rock. I'm looking for something that stands out, something for those bass to be able to relate to. I'm casting this out there. I'm working that immediate area and then I'm bringing it back to me and moving on to the next one. Now, if I'm out deep, if I'm working in a little bit deeper water, you know, in that zone two or that zone one area, well, in which case I'm going to, again, I'm going to do like pretty much like I did the lipless crank. I'm going to let this fall all the way to the bottom and then I'm going to let it sit there. And then I'm just going to slowly drag it and then give it a couple of, you know, twitches at, toward the end of it, just to give it a little bit of accentuation, just to give it a little bit of a wiggle. But I kind of want to let it sit there for a little while and let that skirt flare out, let that skirt flare out in the current and just kind of move on its own maybe five seconds maybe 10 seconds and then i'm going to slowly drag it again give it a little couple of twitches there at the end and then just let it sit there now normally in the winter time is when you want to do dead sticking but right now i'm also finding that on a day like today when the sky is overcast well dead sticking can also be your friend on a day like today especially if you've got some moving water because what dead sticking does whenever you're using a jig is it allows that skirt to flare out and when that skirt flares out that's where you're getting a lot of that motion that's where you're getting a lot of that action and again you can drag it along slowly stop let it flare out for a little bit drag it along slowly and i'm telling you you will get crushed you know something also you know, like this little football jig, right? You've got a rip rat bank. You've got something like some uh, a sandy bottom, a rocky bottom, something with, that's got a little bit harder bottom. You may want to go something to like this football jig. This was something else that I was working today. You know, basically fishing it the same way, basically working it the same way. But if I'm near chunk rock or if I'm near rip rat bank or if I've got broken pieces of concrete in the water or whatever, then I'm more apt to hop this up and down rather than dragging it. Because if I'm dragging it, then there's a chance that that head can get wedged in one of those rocks and I'm going to end up getting snagged. But if I, you know, keep it hopping just a little bit, don't get me wrong, I will drag it lightly. I will drag it gingerly, but I will give it a couple of hops and then I'll leave it sit there again. Same process. Let that skirt flare out. Let's say we're kind of in that in-between zone, right? We, we want to have you know, basically the best of both worlds. And that's when I'm going to pull out something like this bladed jig, this Berkeley slobber knocker. Now, I love fishing this in the wind. Whenever that wind starts to blow, 
a bladed jig can really be good. And on a day like today, I'm going to go ahead and have the blade, you know, with the flash on it. If I'm fishing on a day that's got overcast skies, I, I want maybe some flash. If I'm fishing on a day that's bluebird skies, then chances are I'm going to be fishing a painted blade. But on a day like today, I definitely want that added little bit of extra flash. Even though I'm working, you know, a natural shad color, I still want that little bit of flash in there. I still want that little bit of extra attractiveness. And the thing about a bladed jig is, is this is one of those tools that you can fish in different ways. We've talked about it before. You can hop it or you can stroke it or you can retrieve it like you would a swim jig or even a lipless crankbait, you know. And this is another one of those that I can work in all three zones. It'll work great up against the bank. It'll great, work great in that zone two area and in that zone one deeper area. The difference is, is this is a half ounce. I may go up to a three quarter ounce and let it sink and go lower in that water column and then just slow roll it along. On a day like today, whenever you've got a lot of wind, you've got a lot of current going along, you know, I will kind of slow roll this along in that cooler water, give it a few twitches, let it pause, give it a couple of hops, let it pause. Now, if you've got super pressured waters or if you've got super finicky fish, well, then maybe something like this jackhammer stealth is going to be the ticket for you. And this thing has caught great fish for me on days when it can be super rough out, on days when it's super pressured out. And right now the lake is loading back up, isn't it? We've got guys that are coming back out you know, the weather's warming back up. They're coming out of the woods. The, the bite has really picked up. So something like this, you know, jackhammer stealth can really be effective. This little plastic blade gives off a lot less thump and vibration, and it's only got just a little bit of flash. And I have used this little bait to great effect already this year, having caught a few nice bass on it, especially on those days when those bass are being a little bit more finicky, you know, when they've got a little bit tighter lock jaw, whenever there's a few boats in front of me that I've having to fish behind, well, this jackhammer stealth can really be a great player. It can be something that not a lot of other guys are gonna be throwing, if anybody's gonna be throwing, and it gives you an advantage because you still have the flash, you still have the thump but it's not overwhelming. You can dial it back. And a lot of times that can be super important. So you can see the kind of gist that I'm going here, right? Be prepared for all three areas, by the bank, intermediate zone, and out deep. Adjust your lures accordingly because during the day, anything can happen. You know, a lipless crank, you know, is a great bait. A lipless crank is a great bait in the pre-spawn right now may be the best time to fish a lipless crank all year. It's one of my favorite times, but that doesn't mean that you can't be as effective with something like a jig, which is also a great pre-spawn bait. But you need to be aware of the conditions and know why to throw this and why to throw the lipless crank. And it's really not that hard, right? We've got some wind, we've got some current. I'm gonna go with the lipless crank. If it's a little calmer, if the water's a little bit more flat, if there's maybe a little bit less current or, you know, maybe not quite as much going on with cloud cover and whatnot, then I'm going with the jig. And I can work them both according to where I'm working them at in the water column. They work great near the bank, intermediate, and out deep. So those are the types of things that you need to think about. Use your bait based on the conditions. And even though the pre-spawn will give you a little bit of leeway, if you can dial it in, that's when you're really gonna start landing into those big girls. So there you have it. It all boils down to what your conditions are. That's going to be the biggest factor when it comes to choosing whether you want a moving bait or whether you want a slower bottom bouncing or even a finesse type of bait. If you keep those different factors in the back of your mind, whenever you're making a bait selection, even when it comes down to color or flash, you will have a much easier time putting yourself on fish and hooking into those big girls once you find them. Thanks for watching Wilbur Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.